Alrighty, so let's take a look at a more in-depth application of probability. We're going to be looking at making some business decisions based on probability. So let's see what we have here. We have parts and materials for skis made by a company are basically supplied by two suppliers. We have supplier A, whose materials make up 20%. Supplier B makes up the rest. So in probability terms, what we're saying is if we have an item in inventory after all was said and done, the probability that it came from supplier A is 0 0.20, and the probability that it came from supplier B is 0 0.80. So let's read further and see what else we're getting up against here. So past records indicate that 15% of supplier A's materials are defective, while 10% of supplier B's are defective. So what that's telling me is the chance that I get a defective item given that I already know it came from A, so all of the of all the A's, the chance of getting a defective item is 15%. And out of all of the B's, so given the B's, we know that we have a 10% chance of receiving a defective item. So now let's picture ourselves with all the inventory. With all the inventory, we have no idea which one came from which supplier, especially if they're unlabeled or whatnot. We'll just assume they're all identical. So what we're going to look at is, well, what is the probability that if I have a defective item, so if I have a defective item, what is the chance that it comes from either A or B? So that's the goal of our problem. And while this, I, this type of problem uses an idea called Bayes' theorem, here's the basic setup. So these are the probabilities that we are given. And you notice the ones that we want are reversed in terms of how they're written in the conditional. So what we need to do is, the best way I feel to do this is to map things out with a tree diagram. So here's what we're looking at here. I always have a line to start. Now, the thing we know the most about first is which supplier it comes from. We know from the given information that we have a 20% chance of coming from A and an 80% chance of coming from B. Once we know that it's from A, and I'm going to label these as defective and OK. Same thing for B. So once I know it's from A, I know I have a 15% chance of being defective, which means an 85% chance of being OK. For B, though, we have a 10% chance of being defective and a 90% chance of being okay. So what I'm going to look at is the probability of each one of these four outcomes. So here we have A and defective, A and okay, B and defective, B and okay. And remember that those four outcomes right there make up the entire sample space for this whole experiment. We're looking at observing two things which supplier did it come from, and is it defective or not. So we know that the probability of those happening together is just multiplying along the branches. So we're going to multiply 0.2 times 0.15, and that should give us 0 0.03. For A and OK, we multiply the 0 0.20 and the 0.85, and we should get 0 0.17. Now notice right here, those add up to 0 0.20, which is significant also because that tells us how the 20% that came from A may, are broken down. 3% are defective and 17% are not. So following the same idea for B and defective and B and OK, 0 0.80 times 0 0.10 is 0 0.08. And as you can probably guess by now, this is 0.72. And just understand that this is how the the 80% that come from B are broken up, okay? And naturally, if you add these together, you get one, which is further emphasis that this is a whole sample space. Now, if I want the probability of, you know, coming from supplier A, given that I selected a defective item, so if I select a defective item, who do I look to first? Well, we know by definition of conditional probability is the probability of their overlap over the probability of defective. So 
When I pick a defective item that's given information, I'm only looking out of that part. Well, and all of that information is now labeled in our tree diagram here. So A and defective is right here, 0 0.03. Now, what's the probability of being defective? Well, I know that defective happened here and defective happened here. So if I add those together, that gives me the overall probability of a defective item being selected. And if we simplify that, we get 3 over 11. So, all right, so now let's look at the probability that it came from B, given that we already know it's defective. So same thing. Well, that is 0 0.08 over, now that we know the denominator is 0 0.11, we can write that. So that's 8 over 11. So, gee, it looks like if I pick a defective item, it most likely came from supplier B. So that's going to be a conversation that the manager has to have with the supplier. But as you can see, the result might be a little bit surprising because if you look... So Pyre B only has a 10% chance of producing a defective item, but the thing is, it makes up so much of the inventory that it is more likely to come from B. So just in summary, this is an application of what is called Bayes' theorem. As you can see, we really don't need to have an actual theorem to, to compute this out, but it is helpful to have this idea. Remember that the main goal was, I'm given probabilities in one direction, conditional, and the goal is to find the probabilities in the other. So this is especially used when the events are not independent of each other. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand how to make some business decisions and watch for the next video, which is going to be another similar one. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.